Hello all, in this video, we are going to see how to install ESBIDF extension in VS Code. First, we will see brief introduction about ESBIDF framework. Then we will see how to getting started with ESBIDF on Visual Studio Code. Then finally in practical session, like we always do, we'll also see one simple blinky example for ESP32C3 dev board. So, without any further delays, let's get started. So, we know, ESPIDF is the development framework for Espressif SOCs. It is an official IoT development framework by Espressif. So you can go through this website of Espressif to know more about this development framework. ESPIDF is Espressif's official IoT development framework for the ESP32, ESP32S, ESP32C, and ESP32H series of SOCs. It provides a self-sufficient SDK software development kit for any generic application development on these platforms. Which platforms? So, these all series of system on chips. ESPIDF is used as development framework for them, using programming languages like C and C++. So, ESPIDF currently powers millions of devices in the field that is IoT domain and enables building a variety of network-connected products ranging from simple light bulbs and toys to big appliances and industrial devices. So, let's see some important aspects about this amazing framework. ESPIDF is freely available on GitHub. It is open source. The majority of the components in ESPIDF are available in source form under the Apache 2.0 license. Then another aspect is, ESPIDF is production ready. So, it has a well-defined release process and a support policy which ensures that customers can choose a stable release and they will continue getting important fixes for their application. Developers can choose this framework for their products and get stable support. Moreover, each stable release undergoes a rigorous QA process that ensures production readiness. Next important aspect which is very interesting for developers is software components. So, ESPIDF supports a large number of software components, including RTOS, peripheral drivers, networking stack, various protocol implementations, and helpers for common application use cases. These components help developers to focus on the business logic, while the SDK, the software dev kits provide most of the building blocks required for typical applications. Open source and freely available developer tools as well as officially supported Eclipse and VS Code IDEs ensure ease of use for the developers. So you can use any of these IDEs with ESPIDF to develop applications for these SOCs. So, in this tutorial we will see installation of ESPIDF extension in VS Code IDE. The next aspect of ESPIDF is documentation and examples. So, ESPIDF comes with an extensive documentation for its software components, not only at the usage level but also at the design level. This helps developers to fully understand what ESPIDF offers and select whatever suits their applications best. ESPIDF contains more than 100 examples explaining the usage of its components as well as its hardware peripherals and features. These well-tested and well-maintained examples provide an excellent starting point for your applications. So next, here you can see what software components ESPIDF have. So these are all extensive list of components. Includes network provisioning, OTA update library, manufacturing utilities, file system, object storage, network security, crypto library, IDE plugins, TCP IP stack, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and BLE mesh networking, power management, peripheral drivers, RTOS, SOC, and so on. So, ESPIDF have huge list of software components. Now next, these all are features of ESPIDF, like RTOS kernel, standard programming interface, peripheral drivers, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and BLE support, network protocols, 
Here you can see all the famous IoT protocols like MQTT, COAP, WebSocket, MDNS, etc., power management and storage, and so on. So in a nutshell, we can say ESP-IDF is feature-rich development framework. Now let's see how to get started with ESP-IDF and see how you can start developing application using this framework. So, you will find these resources on this link, like Getting Started Guide, GitHub Source Code, and Component Registry. Then down here, you can see the list of some popular expressive frameworks and libraries which are supported by ESP-IDF, like Audio Development Framework, Mesh Development, IoT Solution Framework, ESP HomeKit SDK, Cloud Connectivity Agents, ESP Rainmaker, for which we have seen DIY projects and tutorial in earlier videos, ESP Arduino support. So, ESP IDF is very developer-friendly and extensively supported framework. Okay, now let's go back to above section again. Here, you can click on this button of Get Started to go to the guide of ESP IDF Getting Started webpage. So, you will be redirected to dedicated website which is like idf.espressif.com. This is dedicated web guide for getting started with ESP-IDF. Here you can see, they have given that, to start using ESP-IDF, select one of the following supported ESP SOC series. So, you have to select your preferred SOC from these series of supported SOCs. For example, we are going to use ESP32C series and ESP32C3 SOC on which the ESP32C3 DevKit M1 development board is built on. So, you can select any of these SOCs, like basic ESP32, or S-series or H-series, etc. So, please note that, when you click any of these chip links, you will be redirected to the dedicated getting started page for that chip. So, let me show you for ESP32C3. Let's click on this. So here is the ESP-IDF programming guide for ESP32C3 series of SOCs. As they say here, this is the documentation for Espressif IoT development framework. ESP-IDF is the official development framework for all these chips, and this document particularly describes using ESP-IDF with the ESP32C3 SOC, since we have chosen this SOC. So, you can also go this drop-down menu to change the target SOC. If you select other SOC, you will get documentation about that. Like this one is for ESP32S2. Okay, let's get back to our ESP32C3 document guide. So, here you have to click on this Get Started link. So, this document is intended to help you set up the software development environment for the hardware based on the ESP32C3 chip by Espressif. After that, a simple example will show you how to use Espressif IoT development framework for menu configuration, then for building and flashing firmware onto an ESP32C3 board. So down here, is the required hardware list is given. Like, an ESP32C3 board, USB, micro USB cable, and computer running Windows, Linux, or Mac operating systems. So, if you have one of ESP32C3 official development boards listed below, you can click on these links to learn more about the hardware. So, we have this board, ESP32C3 DevKit M1. This board, ESP32C3 Mini. Let me show you our dev board which we have connected right now to this PC. So, you can see, this is the ESP32C3 DevKit M1. So, now we will install the ESP-IDF extension in Visual Studio Code and program this board. So let's get back to see further instructions. So, what softwares we will require? These all tools, or, as they highly recommend here. You can see. They say, we highly recommend installing the ESP-IDF through your favorite IDE. So, which are the most popular IDEs among developers? Eclipse and VS Code. So in this video tutorial, we are going to use Visual Studio Code IDE to program our ESP32 board using ESP-IDF extension. 
So for that, you have to download and install the Visual Studio code according to your operating system or platform. Here is the link of VS Code download. Now let's see the process. For that, you have to click on this link given, VS Code Extension. Once you click on this link, you will be redirected towards a GitHub page where they have given installation steps. On this link, so you can see, they have given stepwise process with screenshots for each step. You can go through it. Okay, so there are only four steps for express or simple install. So, if you are on Mac or Linux, there are some prerequisites given, you have to follow them. As we are on Windows, it's a straightforward process for us. Download in and install the VS Code. Then in VS Code, open Extensions menu, and then search for ESBIDF extension, and simply install it with Express settings. Now, we will see that on our system. So we have already downloaded and installed VS Code IDE. Let's go to it. So, here we have open Visual Studio Code. Here you have to go to this left sidebar. Here is the extensions option. Click on it. Then next, here in this search bar, you have to search for ESBIDF. Please note that it is required internet connectivity to download and install the extensions. So this is ESBIDF extension. Click on that to open it in detail. And here, you just need to click on this install button to install it. So this will take some time. We had already installed it earlier, hence it got completed in seconds, but it will take some time in your case and there may some different options you will be get presented with. So, as they give in screenshots on GitHub guide, let me show you, here, you must follow this guide. Here you have to choose express install option and go according this procedure they have given. So in this way, you can install ESPIDF on your system. So we have installed it in our preferred IDE, that is VS code. So you can see, this shortcut of ESP is already got appeared here in sidebar. You can click on it to explore more. So here you can see, this is ESBIDF extension startup page. Now let's program one Blink application onto our ESP32C3 board. So, you can go here and click on this show example button. to see the extensive list of example projects given by Espressif. So you see this huge list. Here you can also choose Hello World for getting starting. So, this is very vast list of examples, includes networking, protocols, peripherals, power management, interfaces, and so on. There is so much you can explore in this ESBIDF examples. So here, for the time being, we will see Blink example. Here is the Blink example. You can click on this button of Create Project using this example. They have also given detailed documentation for this example, like how to use required hardware, supported target boards like ESP32C3 and their dedicated LED pins, etc. You can go through it for more details. Once you click on this button, you will be asked to select the folder for your project. Let's create a new folder. Name it properly and then select it. Now this example project of Blink will get downloaded and get copied to the folder which we have created and selected. Then our Blink example will get open with new explorer like this. Here, let me show you the main.c file. Here, this is the one. So, here is the all Blink related code. Okay. Now click here on the ESBIDF extension option to access more configuration tools. You can see, build, flash, target section, port selection, etc. Different tools are given here. So here, first step is select Espressive target. Select example, blink. So. Now IDE will browse the supported device for this example. Next it will show us the list of supported SOCs. So, 
Here is the one. Now here we have to select ESP32C3 since we have connected that board. Then, choose Programming Interface. So, for our board, it is ESP Proc. You can choose according to your device and interface, like JTAG or USB Bridge, etc. For us, it is ESP32C3 with ESP Proc. Now you can see, ESP IDF is setting the target. Please note, this all configurations will require internet connectivity. So, while our device target is getting set up, let's brought up the view of our device, ESP32C3 DevKit M1. Okay, now you can see, our target is set up. You can see, it also got listed in bottom left corner of IDE window. Now let's select COM port or serial port on which our dev board is got connected. So, it is COM8 in our case. Like this. Now we have set up our device and selected the serial port. Now again, go this ESP IDF Tools Explorer and let's build the code. But before that, if you want, you can use SDK Configuration Editor to do any optimizations or settings. Or you can skip it and just click on Build and then Flash. Now let's click on Build to build the project. Please note that when you build the code for the first time, this will take time, up to around 5 to 10 minutes, depending on speed of your computer. We will now fast forward this video. Okay, in our case, it took around 14 minutes to build this project. Now you can see, build process is successful. You can see here in this message. And in terminal, you can see this, the memory map, and size of the application. Now again from ESP IDF Explorer, you can click on flash button to start the flashing or downloading program into ESP32. Or you can also go down here in bottom toolbar and click on this lightning bolt icon, which is the flash button. For building and flashing at once, you can also click on here on this fire-like icon. Okay, now let's flash it. But before that, just remember to confirm the serial COM port selection and device connectivity. So, we have already connected our ESP32C3 device. Let's flash it. Here, it will ask you about the method of flashing. Choose according to your dev board. In our case, ESP32C3 Dev Kit M1. This is UART method. Select it. All right, you can see the flashing process get starts. And in few seconds, you will see the onboard LED of ESP32 board will starts blinking. This is cool, isn't it? So, in this way, we can use ESP IDF extension in VS Code to program, build, and flash the ESP32 devices. So you can go through all these documentations to dive deeper and to get more information. Follow this installation guide carefully to install Espressif IoT development framework. In upcoming videos, we are going to use ESP IDF for programming different ESP32 IoT applications for Matter Protocol, ESP Rainmaker, and Home Automation. Stay tuned for more projects and tech updates. If you face any difficulty in replicating our DIY projects, feel free to ping us on Telegram or WhatsApp. You can also send us email at info at the rate make to explore.com. We would be happy to help. Thank you.